Oh, do you remember ages and ages ago when I went flying up in the sky? Yes, of course I do. Well, I want to go flying again, but I can't remember the spell. And a good thing, too. Last time you went flying, I had an awful job getting you back down again. No, Morris, some things and people are better off not flying, like hamsters. I suppose so, but some things can't help flying, like clouds. Listen to Stephen's story. The Baby Rain Cloud Baby Rain Cloud was very excited. My first trip out on my own. Mm, how good it feels to be out in the broad blue sky. After a while, he looked down and saw two little girls playing in a meadow. They were busy setting out a picnic lunch on the grass, laughing and chattering happily. I must have a closer look, thought Baby Rain Cloud, and he floated towards the meadow. The girls had just begun to eat their picnic when the first raindrops fell. Oh no, it's starting to rain, wailed one little girl. Quickly, let's shelter under that tree, said her friend. We hate rain, they moaned, packing away their picnic things. Poor baby rain cloud. I didn't want to spoil their fun. I only wanted to see what they were doing. He floated sadly away, until he saw a beautiful line of gold between the blue sea and the green land. What's that? he asked a passing gull. It's a beach, squawked the gull. You won't be very popular down there. Surely one little peep won't hurt, said Baby Rain Cloud, and he floated towards the crowded beach. One family was building a huge sandcastle. Baby Rain Cloud hovered above them, watching, fascinated. Oh, no, cried the family. It's raining. Quick, let's get undercover. And soon the whole beach was deserted. Cried Baby Rain Cloud. Nobody wants me around. I'm not enjoying my first trip at all. He was nearly home when he heard someone else sobbing. Why should I go and see what's wrong? He thought bitterly. Nobody will want my help. But the sobbing continued, and kind Baby Rain Cloud could not help looking down. He saw a garden full of beautiful red roses but the roses all looked very sad. Their heads were bowed down almost to the ground. As Baby Rain Cloud passed over them, they raised their petals gratefully towards him. It's raining, it's raining, they gasped in delight. Oh, thank you, little Rain Cloud. All this sunshine has made us very thirsty. Without your rain, we would have died. Baby Rain Cloud felt very pleased as he hovered patiently overhead while the roses drank up his raindrops. You will come back again soon, won't you? They called as he drifted away. Of course, smiled Baby Rain Cloud. I'll come back very soon. He felt very happy and proud. Jane, I want to go flying, but I can't remember the spell to get me up in the air. Or the spell to get you down again. You don't need a spell to get you up in the air. Don't I? No. Listen to the rhyme. Rhyme time! Hooray! Swings and things. I love going out in the playground. I wish I could stay there all day. There are so many things there to play on. So come on, let's go out and play. On the tree, there's a rope with a knot in. Go swinging like Tarzan and Jane, or climb up the rope like a sailor. Take care when you come down again. From the top of the slide, it looks scary. The ground seems a long way below. But the minute you start to go sliding, you'll want to have go after go. 
There's a horse with a saddle and handles. It'll take three or four for a ride. It hasn't got legs, but it gallops. You'll see what I mean when you've tried. The climbing frame's ready and waiting, with bright shiny paint on its bars. Climb up and pretend it's a castle, or a rocket ship going to Mars. I think that old swing is my favourite. Will you please come and give me a push? And then I'll pretend I'm a bluebird, or a bright shooting star that goes whoosh. Doris? Look, Morris, it's Dotty and Leroy. Hello, Hello Dotty. Leroy. Oh, no, Morris, the other way round. Hello, Hello Leroy. Oh, never mind. How nice to see you both. Yes, we heard that Denise is going to tell a story. About a girl with long, long hair. Is she? What's it called? Rapunzel. A man once took a flower from a witch's garden. But just as he was climbing back over the wall, the witch caught him. You'll be sorry, she shrieked. You took my flower, so I will take your baby daughter. She took the baby, who was called Rapunzel, to a faraway place and locked her high, high up in a tall, tall tower. As Rapunzel grew up, her golden hair grew down. It grew so very long that it reached her feet. Longer and longer it grew. At last, when Rapunzel put her head out of the high tower window, her hair hung right down to the ground. The tower had no door. The tower had no stairs. Every day the witch brought food and drink and stood below the tower window, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your golden hair, she called in her gruff voice. And Rapunzel let down her plaited hair, and the witch climbed up to the window. One day, a prince was passing by. He heard Rapunzel singing at her window in a high voice. Just then, along came the witch. The prince hid and listened. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your golden hair, cried the witch. The prince saw her climb Rapunzel's golden hair. Then he saw her climb down again and go. So he went and stood at the bottom of the tower and called out in a low voice, Rapunzel! Rapunzel, let down your golden hair. Down came the hair. Up climbed the prince. When she saw the prince climb over the windowsill, Rapunzel said, Oh, you are much nicer than the witch. Bring a rope tonight and we'll climb down from here and get married. The prince was very pleased at the thought of marrying a girl as beautiful as Rapunzel. And he climbed down her golden hair and went away singing, Hi Lily, hi Lily, hi Lo. When the witch returned, she called out in her gruff voice, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your golden hair. Down came the hair, up climbed the witch. Dear me! said foolish Rapunzel. You're so much heavier than my darling prince. So, you wicked girl, a prince has visited you high up here in your lonely tower. Never again will he climb that golden hair of yours. And the witch took out a pair of sharp and shining scissors and she cut off Rapunzel's long, long hair. Then she tucked Rapunzel under her bony arm and flew with her to a dry desert and left her there, alone and miserable. The prince returned to the tower that night with a long, long rope. He stood below the window of the tower and called in a low voice, Rapunzel, 
Rapunzel, let down your golden hair. Down came the hair, up climbed the prince. But who did he find at the top of the tower? It was the ugly witch holding Rapunzel's plaited golden hair. Down, down, down with you, shrieked the witch. And she threw him to the bottom of the tower. Bruised and battered, the prince wandered sadly through the countryside. He wandered through towns of tall, tall buildings. He wandered past low-lying lakes. He wandered through forests of tall, tall trees and through deep, dark valleys. He wandered over tall, tall mountains and flat deserts. Then, one day, he heard a high voice sadly singing, Hi, Lily, hi, Lily. I know. Rapunzel, he cried, and Rapunzel came running. So many weeks had passed that her golden hair had grown down, down, down again. She carried it over her arm like a golden cloak. I found you at last, Rapunzel, and now I shall never let you go, said the prince. And I have found you, cried Rapunzel. So we can be married. But high up in the lonely tower, the ugly witch sat singing and plaiting her wispy white hair, waiting and waiting for a prince to pass by and fall in love with her. But nobody loved the witch in her tall, tall tower. Doris, have you noticed what lot of our friends we've met today? Yes, we've seen Jane and Dottie and Leroy and... What? And now you've bumped into Spot. <laughs> you what? Look where you're going, Doris. Well, I like that. I was looking where I was going. It was your fault. No, it wasn't. And I think you were both to blame because you... Well, were we ridiculous. You were going at all. Oh, goodness sake, oh, Doris, you've driven it. everyone, it's time for a lullaby. Rock a bye, baby, on the treetop. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. When the bough breaks, the cradle will fall. And down will come, baby, cradle and all. Rock-a-bye, baby, on the treetop When the wind blows, the cradle will rock When the bough breaks, the cradle will fall And down will come, baby, cradle and all Grand old Duke of York, he had ten thousand men. He marched them up to the top of the hill and he marched them down again. And when they were up, they were up. And when they were down, they were down. And when they were only halfway up, they were neither up nor down. The Grand old Duke of York, he had ten thousand men. He marched them up to the top of the hill and he marched them down again. And when they were up, they were up. And when they were down, they were down. And when they were only halfway up, they were neither up nor down. Hello, here, 
everybody. I never seen so many people around the place. It's like rush hour at Magic Mountain Junction. Yes, I noticed that too, Trevor. I wonder what everyone's up to. They probably all want to hear Carol's super story. Well, I do. And I do. And I do. And I do. Yeah, and I do too. Well, let's hear it then. Millie's Top Hat. One day, little Millie was walking down the street when she saw a shiny black top hat lying on the ground. I wonder who this belongs to, she thought. I think I'll take it home. My mum will know what to do with it. She was just about to pick up the hat when a pink rabbit stuck his head out of it. Who are you? he said. And what are you doing with this hat? I just found it, said Millie. Well, it's a magician's hat, said the rabbit. It belongs to the great Ronaldo. Surely you've heard of us, Ronaldo and Ronald? Millie shook her head. Well, I'm Ronald, said the rabbit. And it looks as though Ronaldo has lost his hat and me. <laughs> Never mind, we'll stay with you now. Shall we do some magic? What sort of magic, said Millie. How about flying somewhere in the hat, said Ronald. But I'd never fit into a hat. All you have to do is say, I wish, and your wish will come true, said the rabbit. Millie closed her eyes very tightly and said, I wish I could fly in the hat. Slowly, the shiny black hat grew bigger and bigger. Jump in, said Ronald and let's go flying. And the hat and Ronald and Millie whizzed up into the blue sky. Doesn't everything look small from up here? said Millie. Oh, this is fun. I wish we could go sailing on that lake. No sooner had she said, I wish, than the hat went flying down towards the lake. It landed with a big splash and floated around amongst the ducks. How did that happen? asked Millie. You wished it, said Ronald. Remember, all you have to do is say, I wish. Millie thought for a moment. I wish we were on the Big Dipper at the fair. Before she could blink, Millie and Ronald and the hat were going up and down and round and round on the Big Dipper. Whee! cried Millie. Can I go anywhere in the magic hat? Remember, all you have to do is say, I wish, said Ronald. I wish I was sitting on a star by the moon, said Millie. Quick as a flash, the hat zoomed up into the sky again. Everything went dark. And then Millie saw millions of stars shining like diamonds. Soon the hat landed on a star near the moon. Oh, it's so beautiful here, said Millie. I almost wish I could stay here forever. Remember, all you have to do is say, I wish, said Ronald. Millie thought for a moment, and then she remembered that if she stayed with the stars forever, she would never see her mum and dad and her friends ever again. So she said, I wish we were back home. The hat moved so fast that Ronald and Millie fell to the bottom of it, and when they peeked out again, they found themselves outside Millie's house. Do you want to make any more wishes? asked Ronald. I think I've done enough travelling for one day, but I do have just one more wish. I wish the hat was small enough for me to wear. Slowly the hat got smaller and smaller until it fitted Millie perfectly. And from that day on and forever afterwards, Millie's mum wondered why her daughter loved to wear the small shiny black top hat. She didn't know that when Millie took the hat off and wished, the hat grew bigger and bigger 
big enough to take Millie and a small pink rabbit flying. If I could find a magic top hat, I really could go flying. You're not going anywhere at the moment, Morris. Why not? Because it's time to sing. Oh, goody! Can we sing Little Miss Muffet? Well, I can if you can. Of course I can. Ready? Little Miss Muffet sat on a tuffet, eating her curds and whey. There came a great spider who sat down beside her and frightened Miss Muffet away. Little Miss Muffet sat on the top, it eating her curds and whey. There came a great spider who sat down beside her and frightened Miss Muffet away. Oh, I'm not too late for the party, am I? Party? What party? Oh, Grandpa, you've given the game away. What oh. party? Well, Morris, you remember you were feeling rather sad this morning. Yes. Well, I thought we'd have a big party with everyone on Magic Mountain to cheer you up. Yes, surprise! Oh, surprise! surprise. <laughs> oh, that's why there were so many people about. Oh, thank you, everybody. <sighs> I've never felt so happy in all my life. Oh, speech! Speech! speech. Well, um, I can't make a speech, but... I know what I can do. What? what? Tell you a story. The Telephone Riddle One day, I looked up at the sky. Isn't the sky high, Doris? I said. How high, I wonder? Do you know? No, said Doris. But it must be higher than Magic Mountain, or the clouds would keep bumping into it. We climbed up to the very top of Magic Mountain and stood on tiptoe and reached up, but we couldn't touch the sky. Doris sat on my shoulders, but still she couldn't reach. I know, let's ask Polly the plane, I said. She flies so high, she must know. But although we searched high and low, we couldn't find Polly. We couldn't find the Tumble Downies, or Digby, or Trevor, or Dotty, or Jane, not even Margot the Mouse. Where is everybody? Let's ask Grandpa, said Doris. So we said our spell. Grandpa Wizard, come and see Morris and Doris by the lollipop tree. With a great big bang, there stood the lollipop tree. But no Grandpa. All we could see was a red telephone hanging among the lollipops. Ring, ring. The telephone rang. Hello. Who's there? Me, of course. The red telephone, said a voice. Here's a riddle for you. What can be both high and low and move along while on one spot? Find your friends and then you'll know. Are you wise enough or not? We can't find our friends, I cried. But the telephone rang off. What can be both high and low, said Doris. Come on, let's go and look. We searched high up on Magic Mountain and low down in the valley. But we couldn't find anyone or anything that was high and low. We started to feel very tired and lonely. Come on, Doris, let's sing to cheer ourselves up. But our song came out rather sad. Where is Digby? Where is Spot? Where is Grandpa? Where is Dot? Where is Polly? Where is Jane? Will we ever meet again? I felt a tear trickle down my cheek. Then, all of a sudden, there was a whiz, whoosh and plop. 
We were flying head over heels through the air. Oh, dear, I cried. I think our song must have magicked us somewhere by mistake. We landed with a bump. And there was Grandpa and Jane, Digby on Spot, Leroy, Dotty, Trevor and Polly and the Tumble Downies. Even Margot was there. We were back in our own garden. Had you forgotten, hamsters? said Grandpa. It's Magic Mountain Day, the day of the big parade. We've been waiting for you all day, but we can't begin until you solve the red telephone's riddle. So, it was your voice, Grandpa. Tell us the answer, please. But Doris held up a paw. I know, Morris. I guessed it when we were singing our song. I know what's high and low and moves along but stays in one place. It's a song. Gosh, Doris, you are clever. I know, said Doris. But I still don't know how high the sky is. I bet even Grandpa doesn't know. You're quite right, said Grandpa. Now, let's start the parade. Off we go. And as we marched along, some sang high and some sang low. But we all sang our very own song. And we all know what our very own song is, don't we? Yes! Oh, yes. Well, come on, let's sing it then. Yes. Right, come on. Yes. Come on. Here we go round the mountain, singing our very own song. And it's tailor made for the big parade with a rat a tat tat and a bing bang bong. Now it is time to say goodbye with a wave of the hand and a tear in the eye. But our marching song will go on and on with a rat a tat tat and a bing bang bong. Here we go round the mountain. Singing and marching along And we shout goodbye as a great reply As a tat 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 and a bing bang bong Here we go round the mountain Singing and marching along As we shout goodbye as a great reply As a tat 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 and a bing bang bong Everybody. Goodbye, everybody! Bye, everybody! Bye, everybody! Bye, everybody! Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.